character. Who are Thompson, Grant, Summering, Erlinger, Speak, and Cuvier? I don't know. Cuvier, but they've no. all got gazelles, so they must yeah. be pretty cool. Of course, other times, the name checks go to people who had fuck all to do with anything except for one taxonomist <laughs> being a fan of theirs. Plenty of popular celebrities have species named... Dude, don't do that. How's it going people? Jack here with another reaction. So today, this is uh, a blast from the past. Well, not that long ago to be fair, but this is because on stream the other day, I got a recommendation from a couple of YouTubers that I hadn't watched in a long time. One that has stopped. Well, I think both of them stopped. Talking about Filthy Frank and Ryan Higa. Content creators that I thought didn't even exist anymore because I hadn't watched anything from them in a while. But of course was this guy here, Salmonella, who made a sudden return after two years hiatus, which I kind of think overshadowed the uh, face reveal of uh, Dream. Oh! But that doesn't matter because today we'll be learning stuff. We'll be learning about animals. Yeah, it's no physics. We'll be learning about the things that we sometimes keep as pets, those that we wash on our boxes of cereals or go and wash in the zoo and hope that they don't break out and eat us. So let us check out where animal scientific name come from. <sighs> ah, hey kids. I just woke up from a nap I took in January of 2020, and boy are my arms tired. Let's see what I missed. Sheesh. Hmm. Queen's dead, war in Ukraine, the Taliban's back. What? What is... Holy shit. They made a movie called Scoob. <laughs> Unprecedented global pandemic, Space Jam 2, some popular guy. Yeah, it didn't miss yep, much. just about covers it. Anyway, we all know about the scientific names of animals, but did you ever wonder what wow. they actually mean? To find out, we must look to taxonomists. That would actually really much suck if somebody went into a coma and only woke up today. After two years, all the monumental events that has happened, the things that we've sent into space, the discoveries that we've made, that would be very overwhelming. That's like, uh, what's the name again? It's not Murphy's Law, but Moore's Law. That's the one that explains like the technological growth that we are having. That as well is uh, pretty insane. They're the guys responsible for the systems of nomenclature we use to classify organisms. And boy, are they convoluted. First, the we got the big eight. Domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. I've seen plenty of mnemonic devices for this, but since the D just showed up in the 90s and is still disputed by some scientists, he's usually not included. So allow me to suggest a few. Dizzy kids puke cereal on fairground staff. Dumb kittens pushing cups over feeds growing spite. Donkey Kong's <laughs> Fucking go serendipitously. <laughs> serendipitously. Excuse me, good sir. <laughs> the donkey call. <laughs> oh my god. I'm having a cold right now, so I should be laughing like this. Um wow, I, I did not see that coming. The way this whole thing works differs slightly depending on which kingdom you pick. So today we'll be sticking to the animal one, cause that one's the coolest and I'm in it. So what constitutes each taxon is pretty arbitrary, they basically just serve to act as another set of branches in the tree that taxonomists build. The one right. exception is species, which is generally defined as any group of animals that can have babies with each other that aren't sterile freaks. Mule, liger, zedonk, skunk ape, they can live fulfilling lives, but they're all shooting blank so they don't count. On the hold, hold, hold on, hold on. Did my man just drop a Californian legend? No, sorry, not California, Florida. Yeah, he's a Floridian, goddammit. <laughs> this concave. <laughs> it's basically like uh, Florida's Bigfoot, isn't he? By the way, Ligers, um, I do believe that there was like a, an experiment made where they actually bred some that made them give birth. Like, wh what is the opposite of a liger again? It's like a, um, uh, it's literally in the name, like tiger, because ligers are female tigers and male lions because they have that growth gene, which is why they are the biggest um, mammal. Whereas tigons, that's the name, the opposite, that kind of look weird. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Um. The, the Tigons, I think like perhaps a cross between the two uh, resulted in the birthing of actually cubs, but those cubs as well are sterile, so it's kind of weird. 
but they don't count. On the other hand, in our innumerable trespasses against God, we can make things like Chidane Danes, which actually work, so dogs are dogs are dogs. Besides species, though, it's the Wild West in here. Plenty of times, eight tiers isn't even enough for scientists. Innumerable trespasses are definitely the worst to use here because some of the creatures that we end up making, from dogs to even cats, like, like cats that don't really grow tall with like minuscule feet or paws. Yeah. <sighs> it's weird to me, man. I, I don't stick with that. So they just stick new sub-levels in between. Legions, cohorts, tribes, series, divisions. And if you want to keep going, you can throw all kinds of prefixes on any of these for even more layers. <laughs> Giganta, like the armadillo lizard, uh, the uh, smelg giganta. There's even subspecies, which the more pedantic of you may think to yourselves that creating names for subspecies at all kind of undermines the single somewhat agreed upon definition in the whole tree. To that, my friends, taxonomists say, uh. But while that's pretty complex, the actual names themselves are pretty easy to wrap your head around. Though taxonomists may hide behind their fancy Greek and Latin, the Vulgate is no substitute for wit. Now, I've scraped through the scientific names of a load of species, Oof. and most of them can be split into a few categories. The simplest ones are the animals that already have names in Greek or Latin. It's a yeah. lion, I'm calling it Leo. Done. Leo. Tiger, it's a tigris. tigris. Cat, it's a caddis. Easy. Multi-word names can be translated the same way. For the golden eagle, we got Aquila Chrysaetos. Gold eagle eagle. They decided to be a <laughs> show off and do eagle in Greek and Latin, essentially the same though. But if a species is too specific or exotic for a one-to-one -one translation, that's when you gotta get a little creative. A lot of the time, inspiration comes from just giving the creature <laughs> the old once over and pointing out some cool looking body part. Generally, yeah. the more distinct of an identifying feature it is, the more likely it'll get in the name. For example, Homeboy took one look at this thing and said, yup, red triangle slug. I'm going on break. We call this thing a fucking unicorn, almost yeah. like that means one horn or something. Also, some guy deadass looked at an octopus and said, well, all they got is heads and feet. I'ma call them head foot. And now biologists everywhere say cephalopod unironically. Matter of fact, if it's got feet, chances are that's part of its name somewhere. You got four feet, six feet, eight feet, ten feet, two Octopods, feet, equal yeah. feet, both feet, double feet, stomach feet, lip feet, sucker feet, wing feet, big feet, slow feet, or feet, both feet, joint feet, no feet, ten thousand feet, cow's feet, spade feet, cat feet, small feet. If it doesn't Wait, look that interesting, another thing- A panda's called cat feet? I know that that's the one that I'm sticking to there but like a weird bell rang into my head uh, thinking about like Chinese uh, naming conventions of animals like how it is that the owl is called a, a cat-faced bird I think that's the word for it in Chinese but I can't remember what that word is but uh, I put it here somehow in the screen thing to point out is where you found it. This could be a territory like American bear or Siamese crocodile, or just a habitat like woods macaque or toilet rat. But that's boring. <laughs> we need to look at the men behind the magic and what drives and motivates them. Now, if there's one thing that the scientific community loves, it's clout. And there's no better way to go sure. down in history than plastering your own name on some shit you found. But not all fields have the same volume of things to scribble the old John Hancock over. On the one end, you got physicists just making yeah. up their own slightly oh. different form of ionizing Rinkin. radiation measurement and, and even then only curry. the top dogs got away with it now zoology any little goober flouncing through the underbrush can say this one has 13 spots but the one in the books only got Lady 11 bog. i will call him splinkus's ladybird alternatively oh. plenty of biologists have given <laughs> shout outs to their contemporaries both other biologists and those across the academic gamut from geologists to physicists to explorers and more naturally darwin's got a shitload but even the background characters get immortalized one way or another who are thompson grant summering erlinger speak and Coo VA? I don't know, Kuvier, but they've all got gazelles, so they must yeah. be pretty cool. Of course, other times, the name checks go to people who had fuck all to do with anything except for one taxonomist <laughs> being a fan of theirs. Plenty of popular celebrities have species named- Dude, don't do that. <laughs> it's almost like, um, the Wolverine, the Wolverine meme. <laughs> I miss you. Named after them, but since all the big cute stuff was found and branded a while ago, most of these idols are commemorated through repulsive little invertebrates. You got Scaptia, Beyonce. -a. The only similarity I can gather here is Queen Bee. It looks like a bee, both not a real bee. There's Anomphilus Jagarius, an old stone named after an old stone. In 2007, uh -huh. one Jason Bond, a professor of biology at UC Davis, dubbed this little dude Mermechia Fila Neil Youngie to honor no, his yeah. favorite musician, which caused my man Stephen Colbert to go on TV and prefer 
profess his utter indignation at not having a spider named after himself. So naturally, the next year, Bond actually went on the Colbert Report to announce the naming Colbert. of a postagist Stephen Colbert. So, okay. if that gives wow. any of you epic biologists out there any ideas, you know, I wouldn't be opposed. Please, I would do anything. For the love of God, I'll even take a liking. Uh, can't they just name like a chicken after him? <laughs> Salmonella. He's there. Oh! Yeah, there's a thing like American presidents have uh, animals named after them, right? Fish and birds. I think Obama has a bird. But also, um, yeah, historically speaking, uh, this was part of like a very weird trivia game that we played once, uh, learning that uh, the good old Adolf has a beetle named after him. Stupid. The world of politics is by no means immune to this phenomenon. Obama alone has fucking nine, as do a load of other presidents. Trump's oh my got a god. With funny hair, Bush has a fungus beetle, Reagan's a wasp, Carter's got a darter, and so forth. Even Austria's most famous painter got the honor through this blind cave beetle. Yeah, Mind you, it was 1933, one. so you can only blame the guy a tiny bit. Hitler actually wrote him a letter saying, Oh, thank you, my little Entomalo Mensch, and then went on to do, <coughs> you know, Hitler things. Fun fact not only was this beetle stuck with just about the worst name you could have, it's also now facing extinction solely because of its value to Nazi Buddy. memorabilia collectors. Guess old habits die hard. Oop. Fictional characters have their fair share of species under their belt. On the topic of evil beetles, this one's named after Darth Vader because he kind of looks like his helmet, I guess. This was actually named by the same guy who did the bush one and belongs to the same genus. Hmm. Okay. There's also this mite, genus Darth Vaderum, which is a <laughs> lot more accurate and frightening. In 2012, a single bone from above the eye socket of a hitherto unidentified theropod dinosaur was being studied. And suddenly, under the light of the full moon, the guy working with the specimen and had his neck cover with hair and his lips clench into a pog and his endocrine system filled with soy and he said it's just like the eye of sauron and then wait what the fuck he turned into a neck beard <laughs> basically a discord moderator and he started chewing on funko pops and sweating cream of meme and snorting g fuel and shitting d20s everywhere until the prostate stimulation made him the dino's genus is now sauroniops from eye of sauron this oh Oh god, this guy is insane. Analogies at top level. Snorted G Fuel. Yeah, I can see that. Spider was named after Godric Gryffindor because it looks like the sorting hat. SpongeBob has not a sponge, but a fungus. The legendary birds from Pokemon each have they their have own. Bugs. You guessed it, Beetle. And the list uh, goes on. <laughs> Yeah. Scientists are nerds. Who knew? Anyway, while this all seems kind of chaotic, there is some method to the madness. One rule is the principle of priority. This states that once somebody publishes their chosen name for a species for the first time, that's the name, and other taxonomists typically can't change it. This has led to plenty of misnomers coined by whoever got their foot in the door first, particularly in the case of the guys doing this stuff before we had the luxury of genetic analysis. How Here's so? one. Red Panda? Nah. Shining Cat, coined in 1825. To be fair, oh, they're actually so about as close to cats as they are to actual pandas, so whatever. Here's two. Capsicum chinense. Eaten there? Sure. Native? Only off by around half a globe, where literally all hot peppers came from. This principle holds true even if someone thinks they found a new species, only to later discover that it was already named. For example, in 1824, one wow. John Edward Gray documented the plain zebra, calling it Equus burchellii, or Birchell's horse, named after a renowned naturalist of the day. Little did he know, back in 1785, some other douche classified this character as the quagga. The last quagga died in a Dutch prison in 1883. So why? why do we care? Well, in the 2000s, scientists decided to scrape some gunk off a dry quagga pelt and study its DNA. And from that, they realized, wait a minute, apparently this guy and zebras could have, you know, made a little plaid in the hay together. So technically, they're one species. And today, they're both called quagga. quagga. Sounds kind of asinine, but then again, so does asinus, and that worked out fine. Just to maintain the distinction, the extinct subspecies was renamed quagga quagga, so you know it's the real quagga. Right. This double naming convention has been done with a lot of subspecies, in fact. Wild wild horse, Spotted Spotted Panther, or my favorite, Gorilla Gorilla Gorilla. Just like, yeah, it's the gorilla's gorilla that ever gorilled. Fuck you want from me. <laughs> a closely related rule also states that the names of all taxa have to be unique. So if two people coincidentally name any taxa on the same thing, the older one gets to stay and the new one gets the boot. I'm sorry. Ew. Is that supposed to be Garfield with our hair? <laughs> That's disgusting.
Like, if you saw a genus called Echidna, you'd think it was, you know, an echidna, right? Well, no, that would make nope. too much sense. Not right enough. it was true from 1797 to 1811, then it was pointed out that someone else already called a genus of moray eels Echidna back in 1788. So the real Echidna had to be changed to Tachyglossus, or Quick Tongue. Then a decade later, a dude did the same thing for a genus of vipers. Another 22 years passed, Yo, people knuckles. discovered the same thing, and they were renamed to Bitis, because they Bitis. That one at least made a bit of sense, given that the original Echidna from Greek mythology was half lady half snake but who cares at yeah. this point anyway i've just barely scraped the surface of all the goofy names out there so feel free to post more down below that's all i've got for now till next time i'm sam Manella, and i'll see you in 2025 <laughs> wow is this the type of videos that uh, first year zoologists roll into um to just watch before taking a quiz because <laughs> by its nature alone it's pretty good it's very well made learned a lot through this actually but guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. As always, please do go and give a like and also subscribe to the Salmonella Academy channel. And of course, if you like this one, give the video a like and subscribe if you want to see more. That said, I wish you all to have a wonderful evening. See you guys in the next one.